Fiora for giving the opportunity to talk today. Uh, it's always an honor to participate in this important um, trans-Mediterranean collaboration. Usual excuses, the lights are on, uh, etc., etc., but only half an hour, I will begin. Um, when I think of um, genital urinary emergencies, the first thing I come to mind is an ambulance, multi-trauma, a kid with a shattered kidney, as you can see in this picture. Um, however, uh, I do, this is a short talk, so um, I'm not going to talk about trauma today, and I'm going to talk about some other important and common reasons uh, for uh, um, imaging in genital uh, urinary emergencies. So, this doesn't include all of them, but um, I hope you will bear with me. So, uh, first I'd uh, like to talk about um, anuria. Uh, anuria is probably uh, the most uh, acute emergency presentation of uh, acute renal failure. However, there are other reasons for anuria. There is uh, urinary tension and bladder outlet obstruction in addition to acute renal failure. Uh, especially uh, in uh, children. Urinary retention can be due to uh, neurological reasons like neurogenic bladder uh, or medication or even things like constipation. Bladder outlet obstruction can be secondary to tumors like a rhabdomyosarcoma in the prostate and uh, posterior rectal valves in boys and uh, Mullerian abnormalities in uh, females. Um, just last week, uh, sorry, and another thing I'd like to say is that um, for anuria, ultrasound is the first line imaging tool to rule out surgically correctable causes. In other words, it's obstructed or it isn't obstructed. So um, just last week, um, a four days old female uh, was referred to us from another, to our neonatal um, uh, department from another hospital with pulmonic stenosis and acute renal failure. She had a creatinine of 5. So the first thing we did was an ultrasound study. This is the right kidney over here. Um, it is small. There is no cortical med medullary differentiation and there are some small cysts in the cortex and there is some dilatation of the pelvis. So this is a small hypoplastic dysplastic kidney, most probably non-functioning. On the left, her kidney was of normal size, uh, a normal cortical medullary um, differentiation. However, there was hydronephrosis and a grossly dilated uh, ureter. Um, so we went on to do what exam would you do next? Voiding cystography. And another thing that I did tell you is that not only that she had pulmonic stenosis, she was undiagnosed and she crashed. So you can see on the cystography that she has severe reflux on the left side and the reason for her acute renal failure um, is a combination of a, thing, of a number of things. The right kidney probably had no function at all. Uh, the left kidney had decreased function due to the severe uh, reflux and she was a very sick, sick neonate. Uh, another uh, GU emergency is the patient who presents with hematuria. Now, um, it has been said before that, you know, I, the mantra, the usual mantra in the pediatric lectures that adults are not just, that uh, children are not just little adults, but it holds true no matter what you say. And um, whereas in adult hematuria it may point to malignancy and you need a really aggressive workup with CT or CTU or MR or MRU, cystoscopy, biopsy, uh, in children it's a whole different ballgame. And in children usually the reasons, are, uh, the, the reasons are usually benign and in most cases you can solve them, uh, at least in the beginning, using ultrasound. So you saw a lot of MRI today, and you saw a lot, a lot of films and a lot of sophisticated high-tech imaging. And um, you will see that throughout the lecture, I'm going to talk mostly about ultrasound. First of all, it's my uh, first love in radiology. And second of all, it is definitely the first-line imaging tool in uh, emergency, non-traumatic genitary urinary emergencies. Okay, so, and I looked in the literature to see what are the causes of hematuria in uh, children. 
Um, I basically found that it depends on the facilities. For example, if you check the relative frequency of causes in an emergency department, as opposed to outpatient urology or nephrology, you will find uh, different statistics. Um, but basically, um, what is believed is that in the pediatric patient, gross hematory, gross hematuria, um, the most common cause is an inflammatory cause, followed by stones, and followed by malignancy like uh, rhabdomyosarcoma or nephroblastoma. Microscopic hematuria in pediatric patients is more common than gross. And uh, there, are off, there are many reasons, as you can see in this list. Uh, orthostatic familial hematuria, glomerulonephritis, other nephropathies, infection, uh, hypercalcuria and urolithiasis, uh, urinary tract infection, and obstructive uh, uropathy, and even reflux. So this is uh, Typical ultrasound appearance of stones. This is a patient with neurogenic bladder, I believe due to MMC. And you can see that in both distal ureters, there's the typical echogenic structures with obvious posterior enhancement uh, in both the trans view, transverse view and longitudinal view. And this is an obvious diagnosis of stones. And in today's age, even the first few months of ultrasound, every first few months of residency, I think all residents know this. Um, here is another case where you can see the um, stones in the kidney. This is a teenager with uh, leukemia, and again, you see echogenic structure with posterior enhancement. In CT, uh, non-contrast CT, it's even easier to see stones. Uh, as you can see here, this is the same teenager with leukemia. And this is a boy, an eight-year-old boy, who underwent reimplantation of his um, ureters uh, after surgery for posterior retro valves and in this recon, coronal recon, you can see the obvious stone in the distal ureter. Um, stones is a cause for hematuria. Let's just talk a little bit about stones. In adults, the causes for stone are mostly environmental, the dietary intake, um, uh, fluid intake, obesity, and in children, the causes are mostly genetic and or metabolic. Now, the incidence of stones in adults is about 1.5%, and it is believed that the incidence in children is about 10% of that of adults, uh, which is about 0.15%. Now, I'd also like to take a minute and discuss urolithiasis as opposed to nephrocalcinosis. So just a few definitions. Urolithiasis means stones, and they can arise anywhere. They can arise either in the kidney or in the bladder, and they can exist anywhere in the urinary tract. Nephrolithiasis are stones that arise in the kidney, and of course they can migrate. And nephrocalcinosis are calcium salt deposits in tubules, tubular epithelium, and or the interstitial of the kidney. Um, so, you can also say nephrocalcinosis is a microscopic finding and uh, urolithiasis is a macroscopic finding. Um, up to 76% of children with stones have an underlying metabolic disorder. It may exist with or without nephrocalcinosis. And not all nephrocalcinosis leads to urolithiasis. Um, even though I said that in children, um, the causes are more genetic and metabolic and less environmental. Um, as we saw, the increasing uh, BMI uh, in, over time in different countries that was presented earlier on this morning, the, the environmental causes as a reason for stones in pediatric patients um, is on the rise. Risk factors. So the list is very long. Um, I don't remember all of them. Um, but kids with stones need some kind of workup. So there's the genetic. You, can't, you have to remember that there's certain medications that cause stones, loop, diures loop diuretics, calcium and vitamin D, and carbonic anhydrase in inhibitors. And you also have to remember that there is an increased incidence of stones in patients surviving uh, leukemia. Uh, the theory is uh, steroid treatment and tumor lesions treatment. 
And maybe not in our country, but in some countries, um, you can get drunk by drinking antifreeze, and that also causes stones in the kidney tract, in the uh, urinary tract. Okay, this is a 16-year-old girl who came to the emergency room with a uh, right lower quadrant pain. Past history says some ovarian cysts. So what are the emergency docs going to ask us for? They're going to ask us for a cyst or appendicitis. So she had a first ultrasound scan that was normal. She was hospitalized because the pain was significant, and she had a second ultrasound scan. And, um, sorry. Okay. Um, does anybody notice any abnormality in her right kidney? Residents, please. I know you know Natasha. <laughs> okay. The echogenicity of the kidney at 16 years old, it should be the same or less than the liver. We always compare. So it's more echogenic, so it's not normal. And there is slight dilatation um, of the renal pelvis, of the collecting system. And I'm talking about stones. So obviously what I'm going to show you is that she had a stone in the distal ureter. So the importance of this is right pain, you have to sort of think Stones is not something we look for in children, but they are there and we will be seeing more and more. Okay, infections. Urinary tract infections. Is it an emergency? Well, it is an emergency to treat it, so we are partially involved. Um, when left untreated, uh, infection of the urinary tract, especially in infants, can lead to sepsis and result in morbidity and mortality, and can also lead to renal injury. Uh, leading to chronic renal failure and, in the end, hypertension. So, let's talk about pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis, per definition, is an acute infection of the renal parenchyma, also known as acute lower nephronia or focal bacterial nephritis. So, focal bacterial nephritis basically says it all. How does it get to the kidney? It either goes by the ascending route through the urinary tract or hematogenous spread or instrumentation. And it is associated with vesicoretral reflux in about 30%. In all imaging modalities, whether it's ultrasound, um, CT, or MRI, there is focal swelling. The classic finding is focal swelling and decreased perfusion. You can also have general swelling of a whole kidney. You can have unilateral enlargement. And you can also have uroepithelial thickening. So, um, believe me, I don't know why this uh, girl had uh, a CT scan, but as I go through the uh, slices in this recon coronal, you can see that on the left kidney, there are multiple areas of decreased perfusion. So, this is the classic sign on uh, contrast enhancement. This is the sign on contrast enhanced study. This is a two year old girl who came in with UTI. Uh, we try to do all these um, hospitalized patients have their ultrasound scan in-house. So you can see on her kidney there is a central area, uh, pretty well defined, different echogenicity, no corticomedullary differentiation, and when we put on um, uh, color Doppler, this area was a vas avascular. And two weeks later we see the same avascular lesion, um, but it is much smaller, proving that this is just um, lower nephronia or focal bacterial nephritis. Um, if you take a linear transducer, and somebody this morning mentioned ALARA as low as reasonably achievable in radiation, so we say AHARA as high as reasonably <coughs> achievable in um, the uh, resolution of your um, uh, ultrasound transducer. So here you take a higher resolution, and if you compare the right kidney to the left kidney, and this young boy with the uh, young baby with UTI, you can see that it is more echogenic, and you can appreciate the findings in the kidney. And another sign to see, you can see the uroepithelial thickening, which is also a sign of infection. And take an even higher resolution, okay, so this is the normal kidney, and this is the abnormal kidney, and you can see that there are uh, multiple interfaces uh, caused by the uh, edema within the parenchyma. Um, there are complications of UTI. This was a 15-year-old who came in with flank pain. Um, 
He had an ultrasound, this is an old case on an older machine, he had an ultrasound scan done of his um, kidney, and you can see that there's an area of decreased um, perfusion here in the lower bowl, indicating a focal infectious process. And if you just moved your uh, transducer around, you would see that there is a fluid collection here in the lower pole and in the uh, psoas muscle. And, um, and um, renal abscess is a complication of pyelonephritis, and it can spread to the psoas muscle. And of course, he had a CT scan, which is less operator dependent and easier to see, where you can see both collection in the kidney and in the psoas muscle and he was successfully drained. Um, this is a neonate who had disse disseminated uh, fungal infection with 